Hello, my awesome PMP warriors. How you doing? I hope you're getting ready for your test. And part of getting ready for your test is being on point. So what I'm trying to do every day for the next number of days is not only give you some content to study, but also some quizzes. So this is quiz number three. If you haven't taken a look at quiz number one and two, please do that. And let's jump straight into it. Question one. A project manager is reviewing approved change requests made within the past month. The process has not been efficient and implementation is taking longer than originally planned with traces of overprocessing, inventory, and waiting. What does this describe? You know the way this rolls. Hit that pause button. Three, two, and one. So the answer to this, my friends, going to option D, is not cost of quality. Overprocessing is not a cost of quality. That is actually not a good thing. So we're going to cancel D. Quality management and control tools is different. Those are tools of quality. Inventory, waiting, and overprocessing are not quality management and control tools, even though they are somewhat associated with quality. B. Wastes, identified in Kaizen philosophy. Although they are wastes, they are not identified in Kaizen. They are forms of waste of lean. You might have heard about the seven forms of lean, even eight forms of lean, uh, waste, that is. Eight forms of waste in lean and eight, uh, seven forms of waste is talked about throughout this whole uh, lean uh, topic. All right, so the answer is A, forms of waste of lean. Let's go to our next one. A project manager is reviewing approved change requests made with the past month. The process has not been efficient and implementation is taking longer than originally planned with traces of overprocessing, inventory, and waiting, what should the project manager do? All right, so hit the pause button if you need more time. I highly recommend doing this because you have about 1 minute 15 seconds for every question on the PMP, so it's okay to hit the pause button, but I will show the answer now. Looking at the options. Requesting additional resources to assist in change request review. This is not the first thing to do, right? The first thing that you need to do is of course assess, but it's not to immediately request additional resources. So we're gonna cancel that and go to C. Ask stakeholders to raise only critical changes. That is not in the spirit of being a PMP. We don't tell our stakeholders, don't, raise any change requests that are trivial, only critical ones. No, you don't do that. So that is not in the spirit of good project management. And it doesn't even have to be agile. It's just not good practice from a customer stakeholder standpoint. B, follow change management procedures to monitor implementation. That's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at A. A says, create a value stream map and identify improvement opportunities. That's a more plausible choice. So we're going to cancel B and go with A because it would make sense since you have found these traces of waste, you need to optimize the system. You need to improve the system. And one of the ways you can do that is by value stream mapping. you got to map out the processes. you got to look for where the waste is occurring. you got to pinpoint those areas. Identify those improvement opportunities, and then if there needs to be a request for change, uh, revised process, then that happens. Okay, let's move on to the next one. A project increment has been successfully presented to stakeholders, and the team is executing sprint closure procedures. What should the project manager and the team do first? Okay, hit the pause button for more time. Let's take a look at the options. I'm going to start from option D. Backlog refinement for the next sprint. This says executing sprint closure, which means you're finishing one iteration and going to the other. Now, you've got to look out for language on the exam that combines some predictive kind of stuff with some agile kind of stuff, right? 
If you take a look at the language here, nothing talks about Scrum Master. It's all mixed up. So you've got to keep your eye on what exactly has happened or what is happening. So we're closing down the sprint and backlog refinement is not what we do when we're shutting down a sprint. Demo or sprint review, well, that's actually what is being discussed. It says project increment has been successfully presented to stakeholders. So the demo or sprint review has already happened. See? B says sprint planning. But we know that the increment has been successfully presented. The next thing that should happen in order to successfully close out the sprint is a retrospective. And that's the best answer. Not sprint planning. Sprint planning will happen in the next sprint. But for now, what to do first is have that retrospective and then in the next sprint, you can do your sprint planning. Let's move on to the next one. A team member is eager to add new stories for features being considered by the customer to the backlog. Before adding stories to the product backlog, whose approval is required? I'll give you some time to think about it. All right. Well, Let's use process of elimination. So a team member, this is someone on the team. Someone on the team wants to add new stories for features being considered by the customer. This person is on the team. So scrum team approval is not needed. Scrum master approval is not essential. And actually, believe it or not, product owner approval is not needed to add to the backlog. Even if this was someone from outside of the team, adding to the backlog is not an issue. It's whether what is in the backlog will be done. Moreover, you got to remember this is a team member. Team members add to the backlog all the time. No approval is necessary. So the answer is A. All right. I hope you're learning from this. Remember, hit that like button, subscribe so that you'll be notified of other videos from this very challenging series. A lot of the questions that I've given you in the past are pretty in the middle of the road, but these tend to be a little bit more situational because that's how the exam is. And quite frankly, a mock exam is even more challenging than a lot of these questions I'm giving you here. So, just take this as a benchmark. If you're able to get like a 70, that's great. If you get less, really close those gaps because the exam is very similar uh, to this in terms of length and difficulty. All right, let's move on to our next question. All right, let's take a look at this one. A project is completed and sprint closure activities are underway. The burn down chart at the end of the sprint reveals that seven story points of high value remain to be burned down. What should the team do? All right, hit that pause button if you need more time. All right, three, two, and one. Let's take a look at the options. Again, we'll use process of elimination. And this time, We'll start from A. Product owner should move them to the bottom of the backlog since value diminished. Now, prod, product owner should move them. I mean, one could say, what is them? Well, them probably refers to the stories associated with those story points. So should you do that if you were the product owner? And how do you know value has diminished? You don't know that for sure. So that's bogus. It's bogus on many fronts. It has you presume in what is being said. And of course, that's not the best thing to do, to just blindly remove, move them to the bottom. No. B, the team, scrum team, should review the stories and decide what to do next. That's not a bad option. Let's see. C, the team should work overtime. That's a big no-no in the world of Agile. <laughs> so it's already getting my, my crossing out here. Um, team should work overtime to complete the incomplete stories. And D, they should be added to the backlog. Watch what it said for the current sprint. No, 
this sprint is being closed. Adding it to the current sprint doesn't make sense because they're already in the current sprint, right? So that is redundant. The best answer is B. Review the stories. Team will put them back into the backlog. They may even have to re-estimate those stories, like if they are partially done, you know. So there are many things that surround this question, but I can tell you it won't be the product owner automatically taking them to the bottom of the backlog. And value may not have diminished, like it's putting words into your mouth. You see that? All right, let's move on to our next one. Signs of a potential economic recession were present during the planning stages of a large construction project. The risk of the recession was assigned a probability of 4 and impact of 5 with an expected duration of 18 months. Six months after the project begins, your firm has been involved in the production of a vaccine that yielded enormous revenues. The recession has not hit and the threat has downgraded to a probability of 2 and an impact of a 3. What should the project manager do? Spend some time thinking about this one. All right, let's take a look at the answer. So, process of elimination. If you take a look at the probability of 4 and the impact of 5, that gives you a risk score of probability times impact 4 times 5 and that gives you 20 so you have a risk score of 20 the current state is a 2 and a 3 for the risk score which is a 6 so we have a differential of a 6 and a 20 so we need to take this down to 6 all right so the best answer is obviously a it's not decrease oh I beg your pardon see you almost tricked me it's not increase by six points what am I saying let that be a lesson you could get a question wrong if you're not in the zone and that's what happened I was partially in the zone so we're not going to increase the risk by six points uh, we're not going to decrease the risk score by 14 points. We are going to decrease the risk score by 14 points to get it down to 6. Okay, I had 6 on the brain and that's why I chose 6. That's not the right answer. The right answer is C. And it's not a new risk. So it's not D either. It's not a new risk. It's same risk, but it's just changed because things are better. The economy is better and we were involved with this vaccine, we got enormous revenues, and uh, we're not um, looking at the recession as hidden us a whole lot. See that? So, double whammy for this one, but I hope it gave you a good run for your time. Let's go to the next one. During a meeting, one of the stakeholders asked the project manager for a new high-value product feature on an Agile project. The project manager is unsure who has the authority to ultimately prioritize this for the next iteration and approve this request. She asks you for advice. What should you tell her? All right. So this one is written in such a way that the answers are all uh, kind of subjective in that it's not a complete sentence. But when you get a question like this, just think about the line of best fit right? Because it says who has the authority. So who will you tell her has the authority? That's really what these are. It wouldn't be change log because that is not a person. <laughs> so we're going to eliminate that, okay? Taking a look at all the others. You should be able to eliminate quite conveniently key stakeholder. And you're left with two. You know this is an agile project, so the likelihood of the project sponsor being involved is almost next to nothing anyway, right? Even if there is a project sponsor, it will not be getting involved in this level of minutia, right? It will be to authorize the project, provide resources, but in terms of who has the authority to prioritize 
See? It's not the job of the project sponsor. It's the job of the product owner to prioritize. Right? The priority of the backlog is something the product owner should be all over. Could the team help? They could. But the product owner should have the final say as far as the value of the items. You know, So user stories have value. We could prioritize by value, prioritize by risk, and other factors. You know, So best answer is A. All right, let's move on. After the kickoff meeting, the project manager notices that to deliver the system, the team must implement new hardware within the next three months. The procurement team notifies the project manager that the current suppliers need at least three months' notice to deliver this type of system. Worried about the risk to delivery dates, the project manager decides to use a different solution and cancels the initial order. What risk response strategy did the project manager use? Hit the pause button for more time. All right. So the answer to this, my friends, is not accept. Neither is it transfer or mitigate. The best answer is avoid, because that's exactly what this PM did. They changed their approach, used a different solution, and then they canceled the initial order. That's avoid. So using a different solution than original, canceling the initial order, that's an avoid strategy. Okay, so you're trying to avoid this notice, right? Current supplier needs three months. You're trying to bypass that, and uh, going ahead to do that would be avoid. All right, we have one final question. A project manager submits a project review report showing that the project has completed 50% of its activities, has a scheduled performance index SPI of 1.2, and a cost performance index CPI of greater than one. What can the project manager do next to successfully complete the project? All right. Three, two, and one. All right, so taking a look at this, you can see the SPI, Schedule Performance Index, is greater than one, which looks good, right? So you are ahead of schedule. Cost performance index is greater than one. Oh, you are under budget. So you're under budget and you are ahead of schedule. So let's see. It says, what should the project what can the project manager do to successfully complete the project? Developing a bottom-up estimate for the remaining work to increase cost efficiency. Uh, why do you want to increase cost efficiency? It's already good. You don't need to do more than this, right? So I would cancel A. B, crash or fast track the project to keep up with cost spend? That doesn't even make sense. You are under budget and ahead of schedule. What more do you want? Why, are you, why would you crash? That's silly. Don't crash for no good reason, right? There might be some instances where... A question tells you greater than one. How do we know that it's not greater than one to be 1.2 on par with the schedule? You see, we don't know that. So you got to be careful when you're answering these. Don't just take what it's telling you. You got to think, all right, what if, is that really true? You know, that's how you need to be thinking. All right. Identify parallel activities to reduce a critical path. You're already doing great with a 1.2 in your SPI. You do not need to reduce the critical path. D, ensure quality and scope is not being compromised. Yeah, to be so efficient in terms of cost and schedule, you got to take a look at quality and scope and make sure that they are not being compromised. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of our PMP exam microprocess quiz for today. Hope you found it to be useful. Again, remember, you folks who are getting ready for the exam and need additional help, you need additional coaching, mentoring, I would advise you to go on down to our website. It's hpmexam.com. HPM just stands for Hybrid Project Management. Go on down there. we got boot camps coming up, holding this week, holding next week, all year round. All right, 
hpmexam.com. Thank you, my friends. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.